All right, here we go. We got another project going here. I'm going to populate this tank. Coming up in this FinCast, a different kind of saltwater aquarium. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I want to show you a project that I've been working on. It's a little bit different. It's a, it's a marine aquarium, a saltwater aquarium. Um, that uh, is not your typical, it's not a fish only tank and it's not a reef tank. It's somewhere in the middle because I wanted to focus on invertebrates, the cool things that you can put inside of a saltwater aquarium that are often overshadowed by the other stuff. So let's get straight to it. Now this aquarium was once what I set up to be a demonstration tank for videos of sort of common aquarium fish, your, your everyday aquarium fish that you see. And um, I did a couple of videos on that, but the aquarium was boring me to death and I was busy and I wasn't doing a lot of thin casts at the time. And so I thought, hmm, okay. Uh, so what it was, it was all stuff you could get at Walmart, big box pet stores, so I had plastic plants, I had a plastic ship, whatever came with the kit for heating, lighting, filtration. It was just a, a box kit from Walmart. And I decided to use, if I could use that basic setup to do a somewhat simplified low-tech marine aquarium that made inverts the primary goal. And by inverts, I'm, I'm talking about shrimp, crabs, hermit crabs, a lot of cool stuff that can come from the ocean that gets overshadowed in tanks that are full of corals and big fish and, and things that are, are more interesting, to that, that catch your eye, not necessarily more interesting, but things that, that catch your eye unless you kind of sit back and look a little bit more deeply. And so I thought, why not make those things the primary attraction in an aquarium? So that's the invert tank that I set out to set up, if you will. And so I've got some really cool critters in there, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them in just a minute. But quickly, so here is the setup. I'm still using the basic hang-on-back filter that came with the tank. I'm using the same LED lighting hood, which to my eye is not very marine. It's too white. It's too yellow. There's almost no blue coming through, and so nothing is going to fluoresce. But... Again, we're going low-tech, so this is the Walmart LED light that came with the aquarium. The thermometer on the outside is the basic sticker. The heater that came with the aquarium died. It just died. It stopped producing heat So uh, after about a year. So I replaced that with a 100-watt cobalt, and that has become my go-to. I've got that set at 80 degrees. And then I also added some live rock from my 180 reef, as well as some dry rock that I had in storage. And I did, I got to tell you, I kept the crocodile head as a holdover from my original tank. So that kind of screams uh, newbie aquarium. But on the other hand, I like the crocodile head because it's a crocodile. And it goes okay color-wise with the live rock. And I have grandchildren, and I know that they are going to love it. So... The crocodile head stays, and at some point, I know that I'm going to get pictures of something cool coming out between the teeth, whether it's a shrimp or a fish, I don't know. It, uh, so far, honestly, it hasn't happened, but it's a nice little cave, and I think eventually it will. Um, I cycled the tank with bottled bacteria from Tetra and the live rock that I had from my other reef, and then I put in a yellow-tailed damsel and a half a dozen hermit crabs, and I just let the thing run for about six weeks. I never saw any hint of ammonia or uh, any problems with the damselfish, and so everything seemed to be going very well. In fact, it, it, it's still going very well. So um, that is a quick look at the setup for this aquarium. Now, when you think about it, this kind of makes sense because I've had freshwater tanks with freshwater shrimp and that has become massive. Just Google freshwater shrimp and you will find all these different hits on the internet and all kinds of people keeping freshwater inverts. But I think the inverts get overshadowed uh, when it comes to the, the salt water because the fish and the corals are so beautiful and a lot of times these inverts don't play well with corals or sometimes even with fish. 
So uh, I thought, well, it's got to be interesting to put together an aquarium that's that's got just the inverts, or not just the inverts, but let's let's make the environment uh, very invert friendly. You see my arrow crab right here on the computer screen behind me. We'll talk more about the the arrow crab in just a little bit. Um, you know, and initially I thought this was going to be great. I put just a few in there, and everything went and hit. And I even had the yellow-tailed damselfish in there, but um, even the damselfish never came out. It wasn't very much fun to watch. So I upped the temperature a little bit, so it's right at, uh, I think it's at 80 degrees. And I also um, added some more cre creatures, and the more I added, the more active the aquarium became. And now when you look at it, it's, it's really... It's really fun to look at it. So, um, but but I do want to say that I really enjoy an aquarium that is uh, is not so. I mean, you'll, it's nice to have one in the corner of the living room or a den or whatever with some big showy fish, what I would call marquee fish, uh, that you can enjoy by sitting back from across the room. But I also like the aquarium where you kind of have to lean in and look under the rock and look for the movement and, uh, and then sort of figure out what's going on in the fish tank. Sort of a close-up, leaned-in aquarium as opposed to the one that you, you see right now. I'm looking at my discus aquarium and I, one of the things I love about discus is they're so beautiful from, from across the room. And when I look at my 180-gallon reef downstairs in the den, uh, it's beautiful because the bigger fish are swimming around, the corals are doing their thing. So you can, you can be back 10 or 15 feet and absolutely enjoy the tank. This is a tank that you lean into. Well, I just added that guy, coral banded shrimp. He's very happy. Now let's see what else we've got here. Got a little goby. Can't see him very well. And here we've got a pencil urchin. Over here, three designer clownfish, more on those to come. Over here, we have a watchman goby that you can barely see, and this should be an arrow crab, and there it is. So let me take you through the critters now, and then I'll, I'll tell you about some of the concerns that I have. And if you're a longtime aquarium keeper, maybe these will be coming to mind automatically as I start telling you about the uh, critters that I put in this tank. But here's what I have. Uh, I put in an arrow crab, which has uh, been very uh, entertaining so far. Two pom-pom crabs. I don't see those very often but I have seen them. They come out during feeding times and they stand, tend to stay in the crevices. A Sally Lightfoot crab, which is everywhere all the time. Uh, I see a lot of that. The uh, sexy anemone shrimp, uh, which have moved into the mini maxi carpet anemones or the mini carpet anemones. Uh, camelback shrimp, which is really pretty. Coral banded shrimp, I put two of those in. Then I have a bunch of hermit crabs, mostly blue legs, with a couple of what they call Halloween hermits, uh, which have nice, pretty orange legs. They're not as active. I don't see them as much. Then I still have the yellow-tailed damselfish. I have two gobies in the aquarium. One is a yellow watchman goby, and one is a wheeler's prawn goby. And then I have something called a flurry clownfish, which is one of these newer species of designer clownfish. It is a cross between a Wyoming white and an ultra snowflake, and I got a deal from my wholesaler on those if I bought a group of three, so I bought three. So yes, the tank is primarily set up around the invertebrates, but I wanted some fish swimming around, and I like niche fish like these gobies that kind of hide under the rocks and that sort of thing. And eventually, I plan to get a couple of pistol shrimp and see if I can't get the gobies to live in the burrows with the pistol shrimp and watch that. That's the coolest thing in keeping aquariums uh, after clownfish and anemones. So uh, that is the aquarium in terms of the critters. So here are some of the concerns that I have. There's a good chance that the two coral banded shrimp are not going to get along unless for some reason they become a mated pair, which would be awesome. 
So far, I have not even seen that they know the other one is in the aquarium. I have not seen them in the same space at the same time. Now, the camelback shrimp, and you're supposed to keep these in a group. I initially ordered three, but pretty soon after I put them in the aquarium, I only started seeing one. Now I see the one all the time. They, they say they're best kept in a group of six. But these little guys can be a terror, especially if you put them in a reef tank. They'll eat a lot of soft corals and so forth. Now, this being an invert aquarium, as long as I'm careful with whatever I put in there, I don't anticipate that being a problem. Uh, I do understand that um, they will sometimes attack anemones, but uh, they are staying away from the mini carpets, which tend to be stinging. And uh, my research indicates that that's going to be okay. If anybody has had any, any other uh, experience with it, please let me know. And I will tell you that nothing has been aggressive towards the sexy shrimp, even though they're kind of small and vulnerable. And they are doing exactly what they're supposed to do because they are anemone shrimp and they have moved right into those little mini carpet anemones and they seem very happy in there and everything is getting along just fine. Now, the arrow crab is also very entertaining. I see it all the time. Uh, after I got it, I started doing more research on it, which is back asswards, I know. But uh, it has been known to uh, attack things like banded coral shrimp and some slow-moving fish occasionally. So I worry maybe about the gobies. Uh, not so much the damsels or the clownfish, but I'm also keeping the tank very well fed and I'm hoping everything is happy and that that won't be an issue. But I guess we all learn as we go. Now, if you're out there and you've done this or you've had experiences, negative or positive experiences with trying to attempt what I'm doing, um, please leave this in the comment section down below. Uh, I have um, I have kept almost all uh, actually all of these critters at one point or another in one way or another, uh, but not all in a tank that is kind of focused on inverts. So um, I'm kind of waiting to see what might happen, what might, might become too aggressive and so forth as things mature. Uh, I do want to add a cleaner shrimp to this tank. Uh, I'm looking for some other suggestions and ideas on other inverts that might go well. I mentioned the pistol shrimp, which I've kept many times with gobies, and they don't always match up together, but I'm hoping that the shrimp will come in and the gobies will find them and, and that that will happen. Um, I've also been watching for aggression, by, as I mentioned that, between the two gobies, but I put them in at the same time. They're both small, and each is sort of taken up a position on either side of the tank, and I haven't seen them flaring their gills at one another or uh, anything that would suggest that there's going to be aggression between the two uh, between the two gobies. So that's a lot of information about a lot of critters. But what I really want is for this aquarium to work because I, I do find myself sitting in the chair, leaning in, looking at it, and that's what I wanted it to do. Um, I don't think I'm going to add any more fish. In fact, as these fish grow, the bio load may be a little too heavy. Uh, and now I'm thinking about what am I going to add to this fish tank that uh, that won't overburden it. And since almost all of these creatures sort of land in the cleanup crew genre, so they're, they're the things you would normally add to like a reef tank to run around, scurry around, and eat all the food that the fish or the corals don't eat. Um, I think the tank is, is going to keep itself pretty clean. So for instance, I don't think you can ever have too many hermit crabs within reason. And so, uh, but I'm thinking, all right, well maybe I'll add, uh, I'll, I'll add a cleaner shrimp. Uh, I'm looking at some other possible creatures that I might add, and I'd like to know what maybe you think would look good in this aquarium and what would work. So uh, please definitely leave me some suggestions down in the uh, comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast. Mm -hmm.